Java is verbose. Java is slow. Java is corporate garbage. If you've spent any time in developer communities, you've heard all of this. Shoot, I've probably said half of these things myself. But here's the thing that's been bothering me a little bit. Java just turned 30 years old a couple months ago, and somehow this language that everyone loves to dunk on is everywhere. Your bank runs on it. Netflix runs on it. Even a game that defined a whole generation, Minecraft, runs on Java. I bet many of y'all got your start in Java programming because of Minecraft. Heck, Redstone probably taught more kids programming concepts than most intro to computer science courses. But that's neither here nor there. How did we get here? Why did Java survive and frankly thrive in a world and ecosystem where all of these other better programming languages died into obscurity? Well, let's start with the elephant in the room. Java does get a lot of hate and some of it, a lot of it may be warranted. For example, this is what it took to print Hello World in Java, and this is what most folks are taught even today. Five lines. Five lines to print two words. And sure, Java 21 allowed for this to be turned into this, but you want to read a file in Java? Now compare that to Python. And I hope you like try catch blocks and input stream readers because uh, if you want to make an HTTP request, well, you better import half the standard library. Listen, the criticism isn't completely wrong. Java is verbose. It is ceremonial, if you will. And sometimes it feels like the language is actively fighting you. So if that's the case, why didn't it die? Because here's what's wild. Java has outlived almost every language and platform that was supposed to compete with it and build the same things it builds. Remember Flash and Action Script? Adobe was pushing it as the future of rich web applications, interactive multimedia experiences. And Flash was everywhere in the 2000s. If you wanted to build interactive web apps, you had Flash competing directly with Java applets. Microsoft Silverlight, Microsoft's answer to both Flash and Java for rich internet applications, powered by Microsoft Java, C Sharp, and .NET. They marketed it as a uh, cross-platform solution for enterprise web apps, which is literally Java's tagline, write once, run anywhere. It's, it's the same exact space Java is dominating at the time. Microsoft threw their full weight behind it, integrated it into everything. Cold Fusion, you probably haven't even heard of it. In the late 90s, this was the rapid web development platform. Build enterprise web applications faster than ever, competing directly with Java servlets and JSP for server-side web development. Basically dead. Now, these weren't all there to kill Java directly, but they were all competing for the same enterprise web application space. They all promised to do what Java did, but better, faster, and easier, and they're all gone. But guess what's still here? Java. It's still here, still hiring, and still paying six-figure salaries. What did Java do that they didn't? The answer takes us back to 1995. The internet was popping off, but there was a problem. If you wrote software for Windows, it only ran on Windows. Mac software only ran on Mac. Unix was its own thing. Every platform was an island. Then Sun Microsystems, remember them, they had this crazy idea. What if we could write code once and run it everywhere? Write once, run anywhere. Now that sounds obvious today, but in 1995, this was quite literally revolutionary. The Java Virtual Machine meant your code could run on any machine that had the JVM installed. Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. But it wasn't just about the technology, it's about who adopted it. While other languages were trying to win over individual developers, Java went straight for the enterprise. Banks, government agencies, Fortune 500 companies, and you know what enterprises care about more than anything? Money. <laughs> and you, that's not what I was supposed to say, but if the shoe fits. But it's not speed, it's not elegance, it's not developer happiness, I'm sorry. It's reliability. Java promised these organizations something they'd never had before. Platform independence with industrial strength reliability. That's why your Java code from 1998 still runs today. Try that with Flash or Python 2 or so many of these other languages that always push breaking changes. Java doesn't break like that. 
And then 15 years later, in 2010, Sun Microsystems was bought out by Oracle for $7.4 billion, and along with it went Java. And whether you love or hate Oracle, they've kept Java moving forward. But Java didn't just rest on its laurels. While everyone was complaining about verbosity, Java was quietly evolving. This is modern Java with features from Java 10 onwards. Lambda expressions, type inference with var since Java 10, stream processing, this isn't your dad's Java or your Java, I don't know how old you are, <laughs> and frameworks like Spring. It turned Java into an enterprise powerhouse and then Spring Boot especially made it just plain dead simple to build production ready applications. And I know this video isn't about Spring, but Spring is a huge factor in all of the success as well. And now what about all of these, you know, Java is slow criticisms. Modern Java with JIT compilation is fast. It's really fast. And with Graal VM, you can compile Java to native code that starts up in milliseconds. So I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, think about what the best streaming platform is for video. I feel like everything has problems except for Netflix. And I'm not biased. This is just what I see from a consumer perspective. Netflix is better and they don't run on Java because they like verbosity. They run on it because it can handle billions of requests. And then there's the JVM ecosystem. Java stopped being just about Java. Today, via the JVM, you can run Kotlin and Scala and Clojure and even JavaScript on the JVM. It became a whole platform, not just a language runtime. The thing everyone thought was Java's weakness. The virtual machine layer became its greatest strength once again, because again, that was its whole value prop to begin with. And look, I'm not saying Java is perfect. Sometimes it feels like you're filling out paperwork just to create a variable. But here's what I've learned after years in the industry. The languages that survive aren't always the prettiest ones. They're the ones that solve real problems for real businesses. Java survived because your bank is processing millions of transactions. You don't want clever. You want boring. You want reliable. You want tested. You want something that's been running the same for 20 years. And let's be real. It pays. There are jobs out there. Everyone wants to use the shiny new language, whereas Java's sitting here asking for developers. And it pays well, might I add. So, happy 30th birthday to Java. You may be verbose, but we see you slimming down over the years. And I know you'll outlive whatever fancy language we're all obsessing over next year. Because you'll still be processing trillions of dollars, connecting billions of devices, and launching countless careers, which is not bad for a language everyone wants to hate. Now, what I would love is for everyone watching to leave your favorite Java story for the sake of Java in the comment section below. And if you want to really understand why Java survived, why any programming language survives, you got to look at the fundamentals. That's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual and interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, AI, any of it. And a really cool new one that just came out is programming with functions. It's a perfect way to strengthen the exact kind of problem solving skills that languages like Java have been built on for decades. And is what you need to understand if you want to actually use AI to the best of your ability to help you code, not code for you. And as I always mention, because it's the best part about Brilliant for me, is that it's hands-on, it's visually explained, you can do little bite-sized challenges or whatever you wanna call them every single day to be consistent and train that muscle. So instead of just watching a lecture, you're solving these problems step by step, which builds that kind of intuition you need, whether you're debugging some legacy Java 8 code or picking up a completely new language. And you can do this right on your phone, right on your computer, and build a daily habit that compounds over time. To start learning for free, go to brilliant.org slash Forest Knight, scan the QR code you see on the screen, or just click the link in the description. Brilliant's also giving y'all 20% off an annual premium subscription, so you get unlimited daily access to everything they have in all new courses. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. I'll see you on the next one.